Claire, we welcome you to Doha and thanks a lot for taking the time for this interview. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. We are as well. Uh, we'd like to know about your book, Twitter for Good, how the idea came and why you wrote that book. Sure. Well, the idea for Twitter for Good really came out of the speaking that I do. I spend a lot of time speaking at conferences about how people can really use Twitter to make a difference in the world around them. and. Over and over again, people at these conferences kept coming to me and they kept saying, where can we find more information? Where can we learn more about some of the steps you teach and how to excel on Twitter? And where can we find great case studies of others who have done this? And mm. so that's really where the book came from mm. um, as a means to essentially you know, appease an audience who wanted a little bit more information. And so I hope that Twitter for Good gives them that. Is there um, any experience that inspired you to start writing that book? Any particular experience? Sure. Well, I think if there's any experience um, in particular, it would be you know the experience I had that led me to really start using Twitter. And that mm -hmm. was in 2007. I was living in Kenya. I was living in an orphanage at the time. And that's really when I really became active on Twitter. I was one of the first residents in the country of Kenya to be mm -hmm. active on the platform. and. It was really what started for me a passion for Twitter and for social media and for really combining technology with social good. And so mm -hmm. I think if I if I look back to any one experience or if I point to one experience as being, mm. you know, the reason that I created the book, it would have to be that back in mm -hmm. 2007, me in an orphanage tweeting on a crappy phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what sources did you use uh, in order to write that book? Did you do interviews? Did you do uh, any other ways of communication with the with the uh, with the people you wrote the book about, so tell us more about that. Sure, so I did a number of interviews. Um, some of them were in person, some of mm -hmm. them were via Skype, um, you know, some of them were via video chat, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was really the stories from other people that I feel like fueled the book and mm -hmm. have, has made it, made it a success, that sort of thing. These really incredible stories of how people are really using technology to make a difference in the world around them. And so mm -hmm. I'm very grateful, mm -hmm. of course, to all the wonderful people who gave me their time and allowed me to to tell their stories. So we want to discuss more about the, the power of Twitter and the power of mobile in developing countries especially. So let's start with Twitter. Uh, in your experience, how did Twitter change the way people communicate in, in, um, in developing countries? Sure. Well, I think the one thing that is perhaps most critical about Twitter as opposed to other social media platforms is that Twitter works via SMS in more mm. than 70 countries. And that's why we see it working so well in many developing nations and mm. why we see so many case studies of individuals in developing nations using, using the tools of Twitter to make a difference in the world around them. You know, mm. Twitter allows you to not only spread information, but to access information. And open information is, is the key to world change, I believe. And mm. so giving information to the hands of people in, in nations around the world is essentially the, the critical, the critical mm. quality that Twitter offers. And so how do you see uh, the factors that can encourage more adoption of Twitter in developing countries? Sorry, say that again? Uh, how can you, what are the factors that you could recommend so that Twitter would be more adopted in developing countries? I mean, access, access, access. Mm. It's incredibly challenging in many countries to have the internet access to allow people to mm. to use the platform. And again, you know, the platform Twitter works on SMS in over 70 countries, but in country in those countries that we don't yet have mobile agreements with, mm. you need to have a Wi-Fi connection, you need to have a smartphone, you need to be on a computer in order for it to work. Mm. And so mm. increased access is the key. Mm -hmm. So let's go to mobile. Uh, how can how did mobile change, uh, or how did it give power to people? How did mobile give power to people? Mm. Well, mobile allowed anyone anywhere to be able to share their story and to connect with the rest of the world. And this is an incredible, incredible difference in the way we live mm. and in the way we breathe in society today. You know, a generation ago, it was. It was a sending a letter. Uh, mm. Two generations ago, it was, you know, sending a letter and waiting three weeks. This sort of yeah. thing. It's, you know, it's changed everything. The mm. way that we can connect. Ultimately, these connections are how we catalyze change. And so, finding ways to connect better and finding ways to connect faster is. Mm is the key to creating positive change around us. So how do you see the future of mobile, whether in developed or developing countries? Sure, I think one of the things that we have been seeing a lot in the past year that we will continue to see in the future is the importance of geolocation with mobile and mm. services and platforms that allow people to say where they are and use their location on the planet as the key factor mm. in, in making a difference. So I think that's going to be 
an increasing shift and increasing number of platforms are going to come out that really allow us to do that. Hmm. So any follow-ups planned for the book? I don't know. At this point, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in writing another, and mm. so I'm kind of trying to figure out what exactly that will be about at this point. But it's been a wonderful journey, and mm. I'm really thankful to all the great sources that helped me write it, all the wonderful stories of amazing individuals who are really using the power of technology to make a difference. And so uh, let, tell us briefly about the, um, the feedback that you've got from the book. Sure, I think people are very excited about it. I've mm. heard great stories from readers. I mean, the thing to think about or the thing to remember with the book is that it's very tactical. Mm. There are, and that's how I wanted it to be, there are tons of case studies, but it's very much uh, organized around a tactical five-step principle of how to excel on Twitter and how to make a difference in the world around you. Mm. And so my greatest hope and the feedback I've been getting from people is that you know, it is a set of steps for how to do exactly that. Mm. Can you briefly tell us about, about the steps or like how can, yeah, in a, in a brief way, how if, if a person is, is just a, like, we, we won't say an experienced Twitter user, but you can say a regular Twitter user, how can he or she use that social medium to, uh, to, do, to inspire change or do something good for society? Sure, so in the book and in many of my talks, I teach what I call the tweet model, which is mm. essentially a five-step framework for excelling on Twitter. And okay. So it's, it's target, write, engage, explore, and track, and each of these five steps are essentially the critical, the critical steps you need to take if you want to really excel on the platform. Mm. So essentially, you know, very briefly to give you an overview yeah. here, it's about finding a goal and figuring out what your goal is for your Twitter account mm. before you get started, and then it's about getting out there and saying what you need to say via, via text or via media, making sure that you don't over-edit yourself Mm. Then it's about going out there and interacting with people around you. That's critical. You can't tweet in a bubble. You will not achieve anything. Mm. Then it's about exploring and finding interesting users and influencers out there on the platform that can help you. And finally, in the final step, it's about tracking, which is about essentially seeing what you've done and seeing if you're on track to, to reach your goals and then making changes if not. Mm. So I think that's a very brief yeah. overview, but obviously the book goes into it more in depth. All right, so my last question would be any interesting Twitter accounts that you would recommend that did already social good or are in the process of making a change uh, in that regard? Sure, well, there are so many wonderful ones, it's hard to pick one. Mm. But I think um, I spoke yesterday, one of the stories I told was about Mark Horvath, who is a man who mm. um, works for the empowerment of homeless populations in the USA, and his mm. account, his Twitter account is hardly normal. And it's an incredible account of of his journeys throughout the U.S. speaking with homeless individuals and empowering them in their work and also his incredible use of media and video documentary at the same time to really share what he's sharing. And I think mm. it's, a, it's a great example of a Twitter account and a great example of how a Twitter account can really catalyze change. So that's mm. hardly normal. All right. We'll make sure to follow it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and for this Thanks great so interview. Much.